Thank you very much, uh, Tim, for reading that. And uh, I asked him to read it because my mind has been dwelling very much on that passage of Scripture. And uh, especially as we gather around the Lord's table, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And <clears throat> I realize, as I read that scripture and many other passages of scripture, that what happened that particular night in Egypt in Exodus chapter 12 pointed ahead and typified Christ, our Passover lamb. God said he was going to pass through the land of Egypt and bring judgment upon the land of Egypt. And there in chapter 12, a little further on, it says he was going to bring judgment upon all the gods, false gods of Egypt. So God made a way of protection. He was going to strike all the firstborn of Egypt, but he told Moses to instruct the people of Israel that on the 10th day of the month, they were to take a lamb out of the flock. That would have been about the same day, many hundreds of years later, that Jesus entered into Jerusalem, known as possibly Palm Sunday around that time. And they were to keep that lamb or that goat until the 14th day. It was kept under close scrutiny, observation, because it had to be a lamb without spot, without blemish. What a picture of Jesus. He is called God's lamb without spot and without blemish. There was no guile found in his mouth. He was born without sin. He lived without sin. And when he died, he did not die for his own sin, for he had none. But he died for our sin. So it had to be a lamb without blemish. And then on the 14th day, and I have actually watched a video given by a rabbi, a born-again Messianic Jew. He believed that lamb was kept right near the house where the whole family could see it. And then that lamb was slain at the door of the house. And the blood was shed right there. And some hyssop was used to apply the blood on top of the door and on each doorpost. And it was almost like the form of a cross, a sign of a cross. Blood up there, blood here, blood down here. But the blood of the lamb had to be shed. It says in Leviticus 17.11 that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. So that lamb of the firstborn of the flock was slain and the blood was applied by faith to protect those that were in the home. The lamb had died, the blood was applied. Now the firstborn of that household, in fact, everyone in that home who entered that house was safe. They were protected. The lamb had died in their place. Jesus Christ, many hundreds of years later, 
died upon the cross of Calvary, it was not enough for him to be born. It was not enough for him to live. But he had to die on the cross. His blood had to be shed. And we also, by faith, need to appropriate his precious blood in our behalf. I noticed it was a lamb for a household. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God for every member of our household. And some of us might be here this morning. We have members of our family that are not saved. They're not. They've not come under the protection of that blood. I'm so glad that Jesus died for every member of our household. And we need to trust the Lord that every member of our family will come under the protection of the blood of Jesus who died for us. And I also see that if the household was too small, they could bring their neighbors in. I'm so glad that Jesus died for every member of our household, but for our neighbors. And we can reach out to our neighbors and tell them about Jesus, the Lamb of God, who died for them. His blood was shed for them. And invite them to come under the protection of the blood of the Lamb. Indeed, he is the Lamb of God for us individually, for every member of our household, for our neighbors John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the Lamb of God for the whole world. And so as we partake of communion this morning, we need to be thankful that his blood was shed for us individually and for every member of our family and for our neighbors. Oh, we need to reach out to them. But let us remember He's the Lamb of God for the whole world. He died for all. He was reaching out on the cross for all. He died there. His blood was shed. And oh, one day, according to what we read in the book of Revelation, there will be a multitude around the throne of God from every tribe and nation, kindred, tongue and nation, washed in the blood of the Lamb giving praise and honor unto him. Oh, but that to happen, we need to reach out to them. But I believe it will happen because God loves the world. Christ died for the world. His blood was shed for every last lost soul in the world that all who will put their trust in him can be, be saved, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. A little later on there, and I mentioned it, not only did God bring judgment upon the firstborn and upon the land of Egypt, in every home where the blood was not applied, there was death. But God also brought judgment upon the false gods of Egypt. And that pointed ahead to the day when Jesus Christ would die on the cross and through his death and resurrection, he spoiled principalities and powers, making a triumph of them over them openly, triumphing over them through his death and resurrection. Jesus truly is Lord. He has all authority in heaven and earth, and his enemies have been defeated. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus took on himself a, a, a body of flesh and like unto ours that he might die and through death he might destroy him, Satan, break his power, overcome him. Jesus has been raised up far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. 
He has put all things under his feet and is for the benefit of us, his church. We have been raised up with him. So this morning, I want you to think of Israel. They followed those instructions. They applied the blood. And one other point, they feasted on the flesh of the lamb which had been roasted by fire. We have the privilege of partaking of Christ. We partake of him through his word and by his spirit. And even as we partake of communion, we are in a very real sense partaking of him by faith. Him who died for us and his blood was shed. Israel marched out of Egypt. They were to partake of it with their sandals on their feet, their belt around their waist, ready to march out, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God, and he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. In Revelation 1.5 we read, Unto him who loved us and washed us or loosed us from our sin and lifted us up and made us kings and priests unto our God. This morning, <clears throat> it was, remember it was while Jesus ate the Passover with his disciples that he instituted the Lord's Supper. As they ate the Passover, Jesus took bread and he broke it and blessed it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. And he urged them to eat. And then he took the cup, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for many for the remission of sins. It was while Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples that he instituted the Lord's Supper. And so this morning, we're going to just thank the Lord for his broken body and shed blood, for Calvary, and also for his glorious resurrection. Let's bow in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for going to Calvary. Thank you for your suffering, your death, your shed blood, your glorious resurrection, Thank you, you've redeemed us, set us free. And Lord, this morning as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we're doing it in remembrance of what you accomplished for us at Calvary. So bless this bread and bless this cup and bless your people as we partake together in remembrance of you, in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus took bread, and when he had broken it, he says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let's eat together. After the same manner, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. So often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Let's partake of this cup together. Lord, we thank you, and even now we pray 
that your hand of blessing and healing and strength would it be upon your redeemed people. In Jesus' name, amen.